Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Weir, and I gotta tell you, I love life. But when I'm not being a husband, a father, a grandfather, an author, or a practicing chiropractor, I'm the host of the television show, Loving Life with Dr. Tim Weir. I love to cook. I love to travel. I like to spend time with people who do what they love and love what they do. Join me and Elvis for the next 30 minutes as we help you discover how to love life. Hey, welcome to this episode of Loving Life. I'm glad you joined me today because I got some really cool stuff today. We have Dr. Barbara Lowe, psychologist. Wow, it's amazing information. We've got the mayor of Clayton, North Carolina with us today. Donovan Lee, who's our friend from Rustoleum. We've got a project we're gonna work on together. And then my new friend, Sue Michaels from the Kitchen Store in Wake Forest. You're gonna enjoy it. Let's get right to the show. Okay, I've made the discovery of the century and it's a little store in Wake Forest just opening up. It's called the Kitchen Store NC. Yep. And I'm with Sue Michaels. Sue, thank you for being with me and hey. letting me come. I'm very excited to show you what I can do. Oh, I am. <laughs> so today we're going to make your famous cheese ball. The infamous cheese ball. Okay. Yes. It's, it's not originally my recipe, but I've tweaked it. So we've got a package and a half of cream cheese which we're gonna throw it in the mixer, if I can get it in there. And I like to leave it out so it's not, you know, hard as a rock. And then we're gonna add our other ingredients. And our other ingredients include fresh Parmesan. So you take your parm, it has to be Parmigiano Reggiano, it's gotta be the real stuff. Okay. And you take your microplane and you just grate it. Well, that's easy. So it becomes kind of a snowy mass. And for it this, almost looks like shredded coconut, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's really tasty though. Go ahead, taste it. Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> Man, that is and then we're going to put a little mayo in there. Okay, so we're going to use, we used a third of a cup of parm. <laughs> yeah, I have an extra one. I'll give you one. A third of a cup of parm, a fourth of a cup of mayo. Okay. By the way, this recipe is going to be on our website. This is very, very easy. Um, and if you like more parm, you put more parm. If you don't like it, parm, you don't put so much parm. Um, then we're gonna put some fresh garlic. The fresh part is very important. I've got my whacker. That's See, how even I, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, that's how I peel my garlic. It's yeah. just a lot easier. And then I use a press for this because I want it really, really small. I don't want it um, particularly large. Mm -hmm. Pieces, so I'm not going to cut it by hand. Take off its little off. tail. Yeah. yeah. And this <laughs> this is a really old one. I've had this one for 30 some odd years. Man, that just poops it out, doesn't yep. it? Yep. And I like garlic, so I put a little extra in. The recipe I think calls for a half a teaspoon. No. Yeah, yeah half, half a teaspoon, teaspoon fresh garlic. So I'm probably putting in closer to a teaspoon. A teaspoon. Yeah, because I like it. And it's so really it good, goes. really good for you. Good for your blood pressure, by the way, if you didn't know that, your blood pressure. Well, it's good garlic. for many things, yes. I think. Keeping away people you don't like. Exactly. No. Okay, half a teaspoon of basil. Now this is really nice if you use fresh basil, that's uh -huh. fine, but because it's much more readily available, dried works just fine, and yeah. I, I actually sell those too. Really? Yeah. The little, the little jar thing? Yeah, sell everything. Okay. So now we're going to throw it in the mixer, mix it up, and what you're going to get, magic of television, yes. is a ball about, this is actually half of what you're going to get, because I've done two. So smell, yeah, smell good? So that, you get the idea there. Yeah. Then you take your little guy, which you were working yesterday. That's a nut a grinder. Bit. This is a nut grinder. You can throw it in a food processor, that's not gonna hurt. Yeah. But I like this old fashioned way. And I do toast my nuts beforehand, and the best tip I can give you on toasting nuts so you don't burn them, is put your, uh, put your whatever, your container into mm -hmm. the oven when it's cold. Turn it on to 350, and when it reaches 350, you're done. How cool is that? Yeah, so then you don't have to worry. That was 10 worth minutes. watching the show just right there. <laughs> was it? Yes. Okay, so then let's bring that over. Didn't give myself very much room to work, We're fine. did I? 
How fun is this though? Okay, then I'm gonna pop my cheese ball in there. And you don't have to use nuts. If you have somebody who's not, you know, not can't eat nuts or something, you're gonna put this back in the fridge for about a half an hour just so it firms up a little bit mm -hmm. because it's a little soft right now. As you see, I can form it. Listen, right here in Wake Forest, 70... 708. 708. North Main. North Main Street, right here in Wake Forest. She also has cooking classes uh, that you can come to, uh, even for kids. Oh yeah. Really, uh, not that good. I'd have to try it, just this one to see. <laughs> Sue, thank you for being with me. You're welcome. You're thank so you for awesome. finding me. <laughs> oh, man. Check her out, I'm telling you. Unbelievable. Don't change the channel, because we got more coming up. <laughs>
what? So, uh, so let's say if I have, I have a client who has that lie in their life, I'll give them the assignment. You are the lawyer for the contrary argument. So your job is to be the lawyer to argue, to find evidence, to, 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 find, to even think about the other side and turn it around so that your argument is rock solid, that you are valuable. And, and, you, and you, can't, you can't switch places, because if you're uh -huh. given a job, uh -huh. you're gonna do that job, right? right? And so what happens when we take the, the contrary argument and really look at it from a different way? It's like building this new house. And you think about some of these uh, old, I'm going to Boston next week, and there are these beautiful old places that have been gentrified. They, so we didn't just tear it down and build a whole new house, right? We took the, what was beautiful mm. about that house and we, we recaptured it and made it new and made it modern and made it nice and made it useful, right? And that's what we wanna do with our lives. We wanna look at what's faulty, what's rotting, where there are rats in the walls, and we wanna remove those things. And we wanna, we wanna build, use, because we are, we are wonderfully and beautifully made. We're all, we all need to be our true selves, but we wanna look for where there's been devastation and replace those things with truth, with what is good, with what is useful, with what is helpful. Well, and don't you feel like people present one face to most everybody else, but that's not the real them? Yes, and I, I love social media, so I'm not against social media, but I do think we need to be careful about social media because we already have a tendency to do that. We already, already have a tendency to feel that there's something wrong with me, and if people really knew me, they they wouldn't like me, or they wouldn't they they would think I'm a fraud. See, we see ourselves from the inside out. Mm -hmm. We see every flaw. We see every mistake we've made. The truth is, everyone has weird thoughts. Everyone wants to pick the M and M's out of the trail mix. Everyone wants to touch the wet paint. <laughs> yes, to me, picking the M and M's out of the trail mix is the goal of trail mix. Right. <laughs> it's the only good thing in there. Yeah. So we all have, we all, and then social media, we put up our best self often. I actually try to put in some, some pictures in social media where I don't have makeup on or I, just to try to keep, keep it I real. I do that all the time. Yeah, to keep it real. But uh, social media can, can kind of, if we're not careful, it can make us think everyone else is this exterior. See, they're, they're presenting this highly edited view of themselves. Mm right? So on social media, and then even outside of social media. So we need to remember that we're seeing the proverbial back of the embroidery, right? And it looks messy, and other people are seeing the front of us, oh, and we're seeing cool. the front of other people. Yeah. And so we can change our story, we can change how we see ourselves, and we can give ourselves room to be flawed and fabulous. So if you were to take 30 seconds, mm -hmm. Look at that camera there. Talk to somebody out okay. there who might be hurting. What would you say to them? Yeah. Well, I would say, first of all, accept yourself where you're at. Accept yourself, like, like maybe you're struggling with panic or fear. Rather than, be, rather than thinking, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of this place of fear. It's start with self-acceptance. And then from there, pair that self-acceptance with starting to change your thinking. DrBarbaraLow.com, I'm telling you, Check her out. Woot woot. Don't change the channel. We got more coming up. Uptown Pictures is a full service script to screen production company which can help you create the proper messaging for any number of applications with spacious state-of-the-art studio offering green screen, mocap, and practical stages, along with a team of professionals who will make you and your business shine. So what are you waiting for? Call us at 919-649-3587 and schedule your appointment today. It's time we put your imagination into motion.
Okay, you got a piece of metal that begins to rust. What do you do? Do you throw it away? Do you just paint over it? I don't know, but my friend Donovan Lee does. He's with Rust-Oleum. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. What Joe. do we do? All right, always a pleasure to be here. Um, we have a few different options here for you today. Um, you know, a lot of people think that uh, you can just paint right over rust and that's going to stop the rusting process. But that's not necessarily the case. If you were to do that, what you end up doing is you can trap the air and moisture underneath your layer of paint. And so the rusting process will actually continue to happen underneath your paint, eventually degrading the metal and then your paint is going to fail and slough off. So what I'm going to show you today is how you properly treat the, the rust and then some suggested paint to be used over top of, of your, your, your recently cleaned surface. The new metal. The new metal, exactly right. So the first one I want to show you here today is a product called Crud Cutter Must for Rust. Now the way this works, it works through a chemical reaction. Uh, it will uh, neutralize the rust and cause it to, to essentially just fall off of the metal. So I have this, uh, this little piece of metal here that I found at a flea market and I've had it soaking in must for rust for about 15 minutes now. I don't know if you can see that, but this is what it looked like before. And then where it was soaking the must for rust, you wow, can see look at that. It's, it's bare metal, back down to bare metal. That's amazing. All right, and uh, another added benefit of this product, when it dries, it actually leaves microscopic crystals on the surface of, of the metal so that it protects it from future rust up to 12 months. Cool. All right. Another technique we have is using a product called Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Okay. The way this works is it's a very low viscosity paint and it's designed to get down in those microscopic nooks and crannies of rust and force out air and moisture that might be down in that rust. Because for rust to happen, there's three components. You need air, you need moisture, and you need a ferrous metal like steel mm. or wrought iron. Okay. okay. So if you can eliminate one of those three things, rust can no longer happen. So the way this works is it will get down in the nooks and crannies of rust and force out that air and moisture. So here's a couple irons that I got from a flea market. You can see here, it was, uh, it was pretty rusted when I first got it. So what I did was uh, first I would brush it with a wire brush just to get off any loose rust. Then I'd come back and spray it with the rusty metal primer. Now when you spray this, you're actually gonna see small bubbles working their way through your wet primer. Really? And what's happening is it's forcing that air and moisture out. You're actually seeing it wow. force it out of there, okay? So once your primer's dry to the touch, it takes about 20 minutes, you can come back with a product uh, like Rust-Oleum Stop Rust. And that's what I did here. So it's a very easy process of just doing that. It is, it is. So this is a more mechanical process, is forcing out the air and the moisture, right. where this is more of a chemical yeah. process. All right, so I, I suggested using Stops Rust on here, and the reason why I suggest Stops Rust is because it's a uh, specifically formulated paint to go on metal and prevent new rust from happening. Okay. Okay? Um, as you might know, metal, when it gets hot or cold, it expands and contracts. Right, right. Okay? Lesser paints, they, they, they don't stay flexible, so that expansion contraction causes hairline cracks in the paint, allowing air and moisture to get back down to the metal, mm -hmm. which leads to rust. Very good. All right, so let me, let me demonstrate how flexible this is. I'm going to give you this piece of foil, Dr. Tim. I'm going to ask you to ball it up. Now, it's been coated with stop rust. Now, I'm going to ask you to unfold it. How am I doing? I'm doing good. Okay. And what you can see there, look, no cracks. Wow. A lesser paint, everywhere there was a fold, you would see a hairline crack. And those hairline cracks are just a, a spot for air and moisture to get back down to your metal surface and create rust. Let me show you something else. We've got two metal plates here. One coated with Rust-Oleum, one coated with uh, a, a, a different paint product. Somebody else. Somebody else. All right. What I'm going to ask you to do is, is, is bang each of these with the ball peen hammer. You ready? So have a whack. Holy smokes, look at that. That just... All right, so this, this is the, the other guy. You can see it did not hold up. Paint just came right off. It came right off. So that's an area for air and moisture to reach your metal, cause rust. Now this is the Rust-Oleum Stops Rust. Nothing paint's there. still there. Yeah. All right, so all paints aren't created That's equal. That's awesome. Now, the last thing I want to show you is using a product called Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Now, this works similar to the Must Rust in that it, it, it treats the rust through a chemical reaction. So I just have this finial here that I picked up at a flea market. You see it's quite rusty. First thing I'm going to do is just brush it to get any of that really loose rust off of there. Then 
I'm going to start shaking my can. I want to make sure I shake it for about a minute after that ball starts rattling around in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly spray this on there. And you're going to end up with a nice black finish. It's similar to something you would see on wrought iron railings or fence posts. Um, and, and this will act as its own top coat. There's no need to come back and top coat it with another paint, although you can if you want. Where can people get this? You can get it in any great hardware store or any big box retailers that have a hardware paint department. Rustoleum. Don't change the channel. Got more coming up. Uptone Pictures is a full-service script-to-screen production company which can help you create the proper messaging for any number of applications with spacious state-of-the-art studio offering green screen, mocap, and practical stages along with a team of professionals who will make you and your business shine. So what are you waiting for? Call us at 919-649-3587 and schedule your appointment today. It's time we put your imagination into motion. Hey, I love entrepreneurs. I love people who can take businesses and go with it. So I'm with businessman, entrepreneur, Jody McLeod, but he is also the mayor of Clayton, North Carolina. That's correct. Thank you for being <laughs> with pleasure. me. Thank you for having me. So here you are, you got this successful business and then you decide what? Take on Clayton as a project? As the mayor. Yeah. Um, well, actually, you know, um, when I decided to run for mayor, I just felt like it was time to kind of redefine the role. And really for Clayton, it wasn't any, it wasn't about two meetings a month and ribbon cuttings. Mm -hmm. Although as a professional retail florist, I had a lot of experience in cutting ribbons. Sure. Which is one of the stories that made the local newspaper. He's certainly qualified. <laughs> um, but it was just kind of time to redefine that role. And, sure. And to create a stronger marketing emphasis on Clayton and really take opportunity to showcase what Clayton was all about. Which is incredibly important. Yes. Uh, as with the success of a business, for example, you're always looking at new customers, new clients to come in. Uh, we've met some people, some uh, incredible business people from Clayton. And uh, tell me what kind of where your vision is of where you want Clayton, where you see Clayton in the next, what, five years? Sure. Um, it's going to be a very quick five years. There's an awful lot going on. Um, but you know, in the next five years, I hope that Clayton has really stepped up yet another notch in the cultural and public art side. The people who have been there for a very long time and then the ones who have been there for a very long time are just so welcoming. You know, Clayton's an extremely friendly town. So, and from the businesses that we've met, you're absolutely right. I yeah. mean, what incredible people. They're Just amazing. Like, yeah. Hardworking, real, everyday people who are customer service oriented. You know, 
Um, sometimes in retail, I think it's pretty hard to, to compete with the mass marketers. But there's one thing we can do in small business that the rest of them can't, and that's that level of quality service. Oh, it's huge. And you find that everywhere in downtown Clayton. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Uh, we appreciate the uh, invitation to come to Clayton and meet some of the people that are there, and I'd love to come back if we can. We would love to have you back. And uh, let, let's push that little town. What a great, what a great place. Awesome. Thank you so much. What a You're pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you come so much. Come see us in Clayton. You heard it from the man. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Listen, there's so much to talk about when it comes to life. You gotta keep looking for all the little things that help you love life just like I do. By the way, this shirt is killer. Go to drtimweir.com. You can order one of these beautiful things, walk around. If I see you walking around with it, I'm gonna give you my new free book, Success Battle Plan. So catch me at Target or somewhere else. Let me see where in this thing. Go to our hashtag, Dr. Tim Weir, for uh, Instagram and for Twitter. I'm telling you, there's so much information that's out there. So until next week, keep loving life. And then we're gonna put a little mayo in there. Oh, gotta go back to the fridge. Oh no, I'm not prepared. We're fine. Pot it called. It's, where's, it, where's our pot? Did I cover it up with the fat? Go. That's what it did. Would this be better off down here? Hey, welcome. You're already been here. Hey, I'm glad you joined.